Hello, I'm Sacho Luis Noguera Serrano, President of the European Movement Society. And we are here in Valencia, in the Hombu Dojo for Europe, in May 2013. We have had here, in our international encounter, several months of hard training, hard studying, hard working here. And we are continuing this work here, receiving in Uchida's program, residence student program, uh, many other students that come here to, to study, to, to, to work and improve their skills. Here we have today uh, our representative from Chicago, it's Shibucho Alfredo Garcia, that is here studying with us and I am taking profit of his help for explaining some of the some doubts that are arriving to us, that are asking to me about a video that we have published on the past days, several days ago, related and regarding Jujutsu classical and ancient techniques, ancient ways that are called Horyo. Many of the people that is following us and subscribe to our channel are asking about what is this, what is Horyo. Horyo is composed by two kanji. The first ho comes from Toru, that means to catch. And the second kanji, the second hydrogram, that it's Ryo, means prisoner. Then we uh, in compound uh, two kanji means to restrain, to catch, to grab the prisoner. Then when I explain this to my students, some of them ask me, well, okay, but what's the difference between Torite and Horyo? Both of them are forms in Jujutsu, are studies, ancient studies of Jujutsu. What's the difference between Torite and Horyo? Mainly, uh, Torite, it's when you have an order, you have some people wanted, and you need to keep him alive, to keep him, is to say, to care about the health and not cause uh, several injuries to, to the enemy, to the prisoner. In Horyo, you are not needing to take care of them. You can catch him alive or not. Then Horyo covers uh, heart techniques, heart impacts that could cause uh, several injuries in the in the enemy. Then, uh, like Torite, in this case, some people is asking why he is staying or standing quiet. Why he is not trying to, to avoid the attack? In this case, uh, we have to remember that in this typical situation, ancient situation from the field of Japan, he will be uh, surrounded by several samurai, several warriors that will, will have, in this case, uh, the sword, the katana, in carrying his hands, their hands. Then, uh, the possibilities to survive to this kind of situation is very difficult for him. Then in this case, of course, we are um, treating about someone that don't, it's not important and you could cause death in the moment. Then the, the techniques are more rough, they are more violent, more aggressive. And we will cover in this uh, tokubetsu, in this explanation, some of the form that we have saw in this past video. This first video covers what it's called Horyo Furigumi Iponme. These are the basic forms because this study has several kata that will cover other forms uh, related with, with other ideas. In this case, we are covering what it's called Erijime and Sodigumi forms. Erijime, Eri comes from Napo, and jime comes from choke, to choke, uh, in this case choking with an apple. And sodegumi comes from sode, that means sleeve, and uh, gumi comes from, that comes from the verb kumu, that means to join. Then it's to join, to get uh, united the sleeves. And in this case we will cover in these ways of using, of course, the wagi, using the uh, the upper part of, of their clothes. Then in this case we are trying to show the typical uh, more, some of the techniques that we have saw there and the explanation in order to understand and to clarify to all of you what is happening in this sequence. 
Okay, then in this case, please, Alfredo San, he is standing in a standing position, nice math. And from here, we are covering in first case the first technique that we will be sewing in the kata that is an uh, erigine form. In this case, we are entering, okay, as I am the one that is trying to enter, we will move slowly and we are near of him, we will be uh, getting closer the distance fastly, okay? Then, in this case, we are taking care because he could react in any moment. From this position, we will grab, first of all, we will grab the wrist, the right wrist, with my left hand, and my right hand will enter inside the knuckle here, and we will do this control. From this, some of you could say, okay, but he could react. Of course, he could go inside myself, he could resist going backwards, or he could try to do, to, to, to take out a sword, take out any kind of weapon that he could be carrying in, in his hobby. But take a look here, a closest look on this situation. First of all, of course, he could try to react, but in this situation, first of all, my, my left hand will grab in a situation that will be pushing into, uh, into uh, his hips in order to avoid to draw any kind of, of weapon here. My right hand will go inside the most you can, will grab, and from here, the pressure on my knuckles will be doing in the clavicle here in order to take out the force. From here, my head will strike in his head. At the same time, I am putting him down. Moreover, I am close to him in order to avoid any kind of drawing any weapon from his OB. Then, from here, we have this control. Now I go down and pass to that side, okay? Pass to that side, please. From here, okay, to this situation. We have the toes here. I will release a little the toe in order to avoid him. One more time, please. Not soaking him. The aim for today is to don't damage some injure or partner in this case then. For now, for releasing, because I need to explain any other details from this situation, I will in the next time grab a little uh, lower in order to give more space and not soaking in this, because the aim here is to choke. This is called erigime. Then from here, one more time, here, going down, passing to this side, and we have this control. From here, I control with my armpit here and my arm. From here, I have the control of his head. Then I will go, going to this direction in order to strike his head to the ground, here. Okay? This is the aim. This is so violent because we have a rock, we have a stone in the floor. Uh, he, we will cause seriously serious injuries in him. And from here, we are continuously having his his uh, uh, lapel here in order to choke. We will turn here and put my head into this position. And from here, with this strong toe, I have the control. I go up and strike. And this is the beginning because after this we could go to this position and make the regular restraining technique with the ropes, okay, as in many other cases. But first of all, we are trying to knock out causing serious injuries in himself. Then this is one of the techniques that it's covered in this tegata. In this case, for, is the first sequence. We are going right now to see all of our technique that covers other ideas that will be uh, quite interesting for all of you. Please, Alfredo San, coming up. Come here at the center. 
In this case, we are we will be grabbing with my catching with my hands both uh, both sleeves. We are passing to the uh, from the erigime to the sodegumi. In this case, so they are the sleeves. We are doing the same, entering my right comes to this sleeve, to the, uh, my left, sorry, goes to the left sleeve and my right comes from the right sleeve on this situation. From this, the same, some of you could say, okay, in this situation you could draw a sword, etc. Let's take a closer look onto this, onto this situation. From here, one more time. I come here, down, and at the same time, I make him go forward and strike him with my head. This passes over the other and make the controls down. Please try to, to release from here. Difficult, isn't it? Yes, difficult. From here, when he is into this position, we will move backwards or sideways in order to throw him backwards. One, two. We have this control here, avoiding him to throw. From this, we could uh, be looking for striking with the back of the head into the ground. This is one of the most common aim because going up and striking down. From here, of course, you could be present into the throat, you will be pressing into the nose with the knee. This is very, uh, quite typical, this kind of, kind of strike, this kind of pressures in this uh, typical announcing Jiu Jitsu, specifically in Horyu. From here, after having cut this lead, we will go up and pass the uh, back side. Into this situation, we will press in order to fall him sideways, like this situation in Yoko position. From here, take control one and two. This we have both controls of himself, and we are breaking here if we want. If he wants to release from here, he's trying to make force. We could always press and break completely. Uh, the the scapular area, the scapular uh, hips on this. Bah. From here, go up and the same strike, striking both hands here. We could have the control. We have several points. For example, passing this here, and it's typical from Tori Day, typical from Horio on this situation, and damaging on the here on the throat. It's a typical way for restraining in Torite and Jiu Jitsu and striking. Then the possibilities from this position are many. From here, of course, we could take with the with this we have control, we could restrain with the ropes on this, we could restrain after this the other, we have the control for making whatever the knot you want to do it if you if he's still alive okay to to restrain and give him uh, the the final decision then as we have seen in these sequences that are uh, two sequences from the Ipon Me Horio Kata we have covered some of the details specific technical details and many other general aspects that you could find in this kind of in this kind of study that it's for me it's one of the most interesting studies uh, regarding jujutsu and ancient and traditional jujutsu forms thank you very much and continue and continue please following us and giving feedback to our videos thank you very much